Hello? Hello? Is there anybody out there? Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> and then I realize I just need to get out there. And there are people out there. Anyone's. How's it going, people? It's almost Saturday, November 7th. It's almost, it's almost Thanksgiving. I'm pretty sure that Wawa's got the, uh, the turkey gobbler. Probably have had it since way before Halloween. And they'll probably have it way after New Year's, which is a good thing. Actually, I, I think they might have put it on the menu like all year long this year, which is fucking awesome. Sorry, I have the uh, the TV on in the living room, and um, fell asleep watching the office. Sometimes, like, TV shows are just, like, good background noise. Yeah. It's, like, a, a comfort thing, too. It's weird. When I was little, like, always would have to go to bed with, like, you know, the TV on low. Even if it was on, like, uh, you know black and white TV on a just a fuzz channel just a noise or like a fan it always helped me fall asleep I slept through a hurricane once <laughs> in 1992 down in uh, South Florida <laughs> where we lived we lived in Hollywood at, t- at the time. Hurricane Andrew. We had two big ass fucking uh, grapefruit trees in our backyard. <laughs> we woke up the next morning and they were just. The trees are still there, but all the grapefruits were on the ground all over the backyard. Well, I think we had like two or three like trash cans full of grapefruits. I don't even think they were they might have been just about right. So I guess it was alright to eat them. But I don't really personally take grapefruits. <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? I don't even know. I'm here to um to let you guys hear a song that I recorded with Bob Bowling. It's called Without a Trace. And um I, don't know. I just like recording shit myself. And uh I've been doing it for a long time, so I like to continue the the craft and Bob's a fucking awesome producer and engineer to work with he he like he adds a lot of shit that I would add if I was like thinking real hard <laughs> or if I don't know it's most m- most I, I hardly ever say nah let's not do that when he suggests something but uh, you'll see it really brought this recording to life really because You'll hear us talk about it. I recorded it on a garage band first. Well, all my voice memos first and then garage band and then over in his studio after that. And you'll hear it at the end. And uh, hopefully you like it. Dig it. 
So here's the uh, the beginning of the conversation. I don't know if Bob Dylan was recording at first, but uh, Mr. Bob Bolt. Control S would be, but that might fuck up the whole damn yeah, you thing. Can make sure that <laughs> you can create shortcuts. <laughs> so good afternoon, Bob. What's up, Mike? It's one thirty-seven in the afternoon because it's I don't know. It's not a shitty day, but it's kind of gloomy out. It's nice out though. It's nice seventy day. degrees yes. in November. Can't beat that. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're here to uh, first talk about uh, a song that I did with you in this studio because I'm over at, at Bob Bowling Audio. Um, it's called Without a Trace. I did it originally on my uh, garage band on my fucking iPad and then brought it here and you fucking brought it to life like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> we did. But, uh, it was fun, man. Like, first of all, I did like everything on it, not to fucking brag, but like, I've never done that before in a studio, you know. I've I've done it like before at home or you know, tried to use my brother's drums in my mom's old garage and have like two microphones on the fucking drums. Right. Shitty yeah. Walmart fucking microphones with a built-in back <laughs> to them and they had like the little button on the top. <laughs> and they it's and back then I could like I had my 24 track mixer but I I couldn't mix that well. I was fucking stupid back then. If you heard some right. of the shit that I <laughs> recorded back then, it's like, like you could barely. There's no body to it, right, right, right. I mean? Especially the drums. Well, that probably like, starts with the mics and the preamps. Yes, you know what I mean. I, I eventually learned the stuff that. was coming in weeks. So you were you were yeah. handicapped before you ever started mixing. Mm-hmm. I um, I learned that after a while, like. <laughs> I'm using Walmart microphones, dude. <laughs> I never <laughs> even heard. Aren't I'd like to good. see one of those. I never even heard Walmart, of a Walmart Target. I, f- I don't know if I have one in the box, but yeah. Um, Twenty some years ago, I had a Radio Shack microphone. Dude, I would still go. I might to Radio still have Shack, Shack, but there was more fucking Radio Shacks around. <laughs> I think they might be done now. Is Radio they're Shack almost gone? done. Right. I think they're hanging on by a thread. Actually, there was one in the uh, Berlin, like near uh, Shoprite. Like, what do you go there for now? I mean. I would just go there for like ac- like little cable Ran- extensions, adapters, adapters yeah. Yeah, three dollars, quarter, quarter inch to eighth inch for headphones. That's you know? why they're going out of business because you go in there and buy <laughs> something for only- three dollars. <laughs> exactly. Adapter, three dollar adapter, <laughs> and use my fucking like credit card or mic uh, or uh, debit card, and yeah, that yeah. would charge them yeah. kind of money. Right? Little tiny batteries, yeah, weird batteries you can't find. It's anywhere. all Radio Shack, and then there was one in the Echelon Mall for a while, but I think that one's that that's one's, that one's been done going. Yeah, that Echelon mall's Town about Center. Gone. Or no, Voorhees Town Center. Right, right. Fuck. <laughs> so what have you been up to uh, lately? Doing a lot of sound, right? A lot of live a sound. A lot, lot of live sound. And I got a couple of cool projects going on in here too. So, um, I'm busy. I'm 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 busy. It's great. That's awesome, man. I I remember like a year or two ago, and you were just like, Are "People gonna come and like record or what?" <laughs> it was hit and miss. I would. <laughs> yeah. Well, probably five years ago is when I was really trying to go, you know offer my services to the public and um i'd be busy for a week or two and then i'd do nothing for a week and i didn't know if it was going to work and then a couple years ago started getting you know better and better and better and not not to say that it's awesome or that i'm like you know killing it right now but i'm busy all the time between the live sound and the studio i'm I'm working every day and that's really a session or a mix i'm gonna ask for like yeah yeah Consistency. Is I key. am totally happy, <laughs> and I am totally appreciative to all the people who have come through the studio doors. It's been great. Yeah, and you, to all the live bands. You got a I cool, mean, li- a lot of cool bands that have come through here. You got your yeah. SoundCloud up. Um, there's a, a bunch of uh, original and cover bands that have because yeah. you you do live sound for original and cover bands. So when you go out, you record them and just you yeah. Know, well, unfortunately, share some stuff for the original bands. You know, they're up to the, they use the live sound that's provided by the venue because, um, yeah, you know, and there's not enough money in that world where live for an original band really to hire me to do their live show. Yeah, true. Or, and, and not that I'm so expensive, they can't hire anybody. I mean, they're barely, they I've been in barely original, pay for their own equipment. Yeah, <laughs> I've been in original bands. I've never been in a cover band myself. I've only ever been in original, in I mean, original yeah. bands. And original we bands were lucky to make, songs. we were lucky to make, you know, 
enough money to cover our beer and food tab. So <laughs> there was not even an option to you know, bring in a sound company of any sort, of any level. Yeah. You know? um, but those venues mostly have house sound and a house sound guy, and you just hope that they're good. And a lot of times they are. There's plenty of great house sound systems around here and great sound house sound men. But um, you know, the, the cover bands, they're the ones who, who have the budget to have live sound, and it's required. They're, they're showing up to a club that has a stage yeah, and, and, and nothing maybe a light. <laughs> and maybe a light and nothing on it. You need to bring in every. You need to bring the show, and that's been a great thing to help me here at the yeah. studio. I mean, working. You know, I started out with South Forty Seven doing live music for them, live um, mixing for them, and then just kept on spreading. Now I'm working for about I don't know at least eight or ten bands. So it's pretty yeah, awesome. Just doing live sound. Yeah, not even. The, yeah, studio. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The live <laughs> sound. Well, the li- the thing that's cool about live sound, it's regular it, they keep coming back like yeah, yeah. if you come to me and say you want to do an original album that's awesome that's what i'm into and I w- I'm, I'm happy to do it but then once we're done you and i are done yeah i don't keep maybe coming back. unless years. i'm like consistently working with you yeah yeah, know, yeah. Like uh, or if you have like some kind of you know someone who's buying your music then that's different and i do have one guy who does that with me and that that's awesome where he just keeps coming in produces one or two songs Mm-hmm. A month later, he comes in and does another one, and it's just a continual, regular business for him and I, and that's awesome also. But the cover bands reply, supply me with repeated, continual business um, that just gets busier as they get bigger. And the original, once a band is done, I might not see him for two or three years. Yeah. But uh, the cool thing is I've been doing this long enough now where... I ha- I am on the second and even third project with some of the bands, so that's awesome. Yeah. To, to ha- you know to be to be in this long enough where I'm on um, someone's second project or the third project, and that they liked me enough the first time that they're back. You know, mm-hmm. so technically that's awesome. you could fucking start your own label, really. Because yeah, you I are thought doing about a way. I thought about a. I thought about that. Um, still have all to you figure need out is a lot somebody of to logistics. Distribution. Right? Yeah, I like, got to think about. It. I have to learn more about that, but I'm. Anybody that definitely has any fucking information. Yeah, I've definitely <laughs> thought about that because I have some bands yeah. that I work with, original bands that I um, truly believe in what they're doing, and they don't have, you know, the funds or the support or just the the, the avenue the ability to get out there. They don't have the the, the the correct path to to get people to hear it. Their friends and their existing fans love what they're doing, mm-hmm. but they have no way to get to the next level. To get on a tour, to get someone in California or Canada to hear their music, and yeah, and and I don't know that I know that either, but I would like I want, I'm interested in learning more about it and possibly getting into that side of things. Hey man, I um, should speak of the tours. I'm going on a fucking tour. I know. Check it out. Mike's going on tour. Uh, my Revolve, right? yeah, Revolve. My friends uh, in Revolve, they're fucking cool people, and um, with a name band too. I mean, yeah, they're, they're going on tour with fucking Hinder. Yeah. Back in the day. The Shaman's Harvest and Within Reason. And uh, it's going to be fucking fun. I've never been on anything like that. And I don't know if and the members yeah. of the band have individually. or This is their first tour together. and um, Right. Because it's, it's a new, cr- new lineup, right? From yeah. The, it's a new band. But they, like, they used to be a band, another band, correct? Well, kind of. Um, the I believe that Debbie and Dave came from another band was 2012 tribe and uh tommy and joe and actually now josh the bass player were in devise devise that's who i was thinking. and uh yeah i don't know exactly what happened with them but they were recording a fucking ep with morgan from seven dust something happened it didn't come out and um tommy and, and joe hooked up with 2012 tribe and they needed to you know, redo their stuff and get a new album out. And I'm pretty sure that Tommy went in there and fucking redid all the vocals. Like they had another guy with the whole album or whatever and, or the EP and they just redid. And then I don't even know, I think they might've actually made some new songs and put them out like as part of it. But it's it's pretty fucking cool. Now this one's produced by Clint from seven dust and that's fucking awesome. They're one of my favorite bands. I just did a review of their last album. Yeah, yeah, that's no, that's, that's so awesome. It's gonna be a great experience yeah, for you and wait. for them, and you and you're gonna learn a lot about how the tour, how tour really works. Yeah, that's and what's what involved. I want to see like the and back. You'll, you come back story. either so hyped and educated and ready for the next thing, <laughs> or so jaded. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> yeah, like, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll Who knows what this what this experience holds for everybody? But I, I hope 
that is awesome for for the band, for all four of the bands. I hope it's a great success, and I hope you have an awesome time. Thanks, man. And learn this a bunch of fun, stuff, dude. And hanging out with cool musicians. Oh yeah, they're all great. Yeah, exactly. So that'll that'll. I can't be wait, dude. I'm gonna bring my fucking where it's at. my podcast shit, and uh, hopefully maybe talk to somebody. I don't know. Maybe just myself in the back in the bedroom, <laughs> <laughs> talking to yourself. But uh, no, nah, I listen. You're gonna fun. bring your podcast gear with you, bring my and to guitar I bet and just one by one bam. each band over the t- over the course of the weeks that you're away. How many weeks? Six it's weeks? just two weeks or two weeks. Yeah, it's uh, November twentieth. Still, there'll be downtime. Leaving. You're gonna get get to a show at three in the afternoon and not play till nine at night. Yeah. And plus, they're going to be doing radio shit in between days that they're not on shows and stuff. So I get to see that kind of <laughs> stuff too. They'll be like, "Ah, Mike, we don't have time for your podcast. We're we're going on uh, oh yeah FM radio today. Yeah, we're going on corporate radio where we can't curse. Yeah, or, or well, you just tell them we actually feel your podcast is worldwide, and that radio station only covers one city. Exactly, <laughs> unless they have a podcast of the radio show, no, <laughs> which then most they, shows do have now. That trumps all. Right there. They got <laughs> you. Beat. Fuck them. So but anyway, uh, let's talk about your song. Without yeah, a trace. Without a trace. It's Michael uh, Klein, solo artist but, uh, on this one. Yeah. Um, Mike's not. A, listen, Mike is not uh, the type to brag or to. I'm not really a solo artist either. I want I a know. fucking band, but you know, well, shit happens. Mike doesn't brag and talk, you know, about himself in in those type of ways. But I'll try not to. Mike wrote this song, and um, came into the studio and played every instrument. He's new. And. That's it. I mean, no one did anything on this project except for Mike. I mean, I engineered it and mixed it, and Mike performed it. Every, everything, every note you hear, <coughs> every drum hit was Mike. So that's a pretty cool thing, and um, not everybody can do that. Matter of fact, hardly anybody can do that. <laughs> so, I mean, there's some, and I've met some guys who can do it, and uh, I've done it in here before, but um, it is rare, and yeah. it's pretty cool. I'd love so to congratulations say it, it, on that. Yeah, thank you. That's, a, that's an accomplishment in itself. If the song's good or not, I'll leave it up to everyone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get no, I, I, I but, think uh, it's cool. Um, I originally did it. I do like I do a lot of my songs. I came up with a um, just a little stupid acoustic riff. easy acoustic riff yeah. sitting in my living room, and I have it on my phone actually. I might add it into here. Um, it's just me playing the the riff on the acoustic, real slow, kind of weird. Oh, that'll I be hear totally Melissa cool walking here. around like. Yeah, yeah. The background. That'll be totally cool to hear like the yeah. actual That's a cool or thing origin. about this day and age A band A guy like you or a band You could be the biggest band And write a song And record it on your iPhone <laughs> you, know, you know Not even with a not even with garage band or any, any Yeah the voice memo Just thing, literally yeah. hit record on your phone Like you're doing a voice memo and play your guitar and sing yeah, that's our song. So you don't forget the idea Like we did back in the day with tape recorders <laughs> Um or just play it over the fuck over again until you don't forget it. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's what I used to do. <laughs> I'd play it for like an hour, the riff. Yeah. So I wouldn't forget it. Yeah, and then half the time, we'd still you, forget it. Yeah. Or play it backwards. <laughs> One night back. of sleep, and the next day you. you <laughs> it's the same chord. You wrote it down, but it doesn't feel the same. Yeah. Like the way you strummed it or the way you sang it, and you yeah. can't and never can remember. <laughs> so, I hated that time. Right. That's why, I like, most of the time, yeah. though, if I sit down, I have something out there. I, c- I know at least if I come up with something, I could just. Psh, we are living button. in the best cool. time right now. I mean, it's only going to get better, but the best time to be recording, doing doing anything. I mean, graphics, yeah, music, technology, shit, technology dude. is awesome. I've and been I've been doing these little fucking diddly do fucking edits on my phone, and uh, for a. Uh, Joey Diaz and Joe Rogan, and they keep sharing them shits, and that's fucking awesome. Congratulations man. on that. That is totally <laughs> that's awesome. That's fucking awesome. I sound like an idiot. No, it is no. awesome. I mean, <laughs> it those awesome. guys have, you know, you're you're their fan. Huge. And you create art or graphic designs. You yeah, know, just anyway. to, just to help them out. You do it anyway, yeah. but you did it to help them out or hoping that they'll see it and like it. And then for them to just see to retweet it, it and thank to me share for it, it is to incredible. thank you, I, it's they're, they're following awesome. your podcast now. Especially because those two dudes are two of the reasons why I started doing this shit in the first place. I never right. They've inspired you to, to talk do the to podcast. people, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've and always that, been an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> but now, but you're being recognized for your art. I mean, they're like, "Thank you, Mike. It looks awesome." They share it. They might not say those exact words, but that's what they're saying. If they're putting it on their 
Facebook page and on their um, yeah. well, Twitter, Twitter thanks account. Thanks for the picture. Exactly, because so. he likes it, because it looks yeah, cool. Thank you. I saw the actual... Thank you for thanking me. I saw his actual... Um, you remade their flyer for the show, and I think it's in Colorado. Yeah, yeah. I saw the original, the actual the picture. flyer, and that's why I liked yours. That one was fine. It's like well, standard, a standard 2015 graphic arts project that the guy that they have you know for their ad and your thing just brings it to life i mean it's color it's got effects it's you know, it's yeah. just, just cooler you know it, it people want to look at it not to put down whoever did that no i'm not because it might have been that dude that <laughs> works with joe jamie <laughs> yeah <laughs> he does the rep and he does cool shit because he goes to the comedy he does like what i do yeah. with the uh, live sh- music shows and yeah. i'll well so I'll take a I photographer's pictures yeah. and cut them out and put them behind something else. But he'll do that with the comedians and put it all together for like a you know a comedy store show tonight, Death Squad fucking secret show, and then I have all of them on there. Right. And it looks cool. Right. Like he does he does awesome shit too. But I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't that check shit. out all all of that stuff. But you know, what I'm yeah, saying? it's Just, fun and it's you cool take to get it, noticed. You take something that's a generic flyer in general and. Make it, make it a piece it of art. Give it some and, uh, mad flavor. <laughs> make it something that the fans or those people would want to look at yeah. and maybe even save. It's not just the date, the time, and the photograph. It's more. Yeah, yeah. So if you're really a fan... I just really did one fan, actually for uh, Steve-O. Yeah. Steve-O was on Joe Rogan's podcast a couple okay. days ago. And he's he does comedy for the last five years. Yeah. I don't know if you know that, but... Uh-huh. Uh, He's doing his first Showtime special. His body can't take. <laughs> no, he's still doing like, crazy shit, oh. and he's talking about doing more crazy shit. He's do, mm. doing the Paramount Theater in Austin, Texas, on uh, November twenty first, and I just tweeted that. I don't know if he'll say it or not, but that's cool. It's a cool little picture, but um, yeah, it's just cool to get noticed and retweeted. It's a weird day and age that that is cool recognition. But uh, hey, listen, yeah. you work hard at that stuff. Sometimes. For posterity, you know, just for your own self, you know, mm-hmm. and, and to, for, for it to get recognized, shared, and appreciated is an awesome thing. I spend hours down here mixing, doing do things for people's project. One? Your song here, mm. eight hours, mm. you know, besides the time that we spent recording it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which was probably eight to ten, maybe. Yeah, I'd say we have a good ten hours. Um Definitely, mm-hmm. at least that. Um, that's typical, also. But I'll spend hours on everyone's project that they'll never, that I never build them for, and they never know about because I just want certain things to be to a certain standard. Yeah. And and let's face it, at the level that I am and the bands that I'm working with are on, and I'm talking about financially, not the quality of their music, but they can't afford to say, okay, take uh, you know, take ten hours extra on our album and clean up all the S's and T's and, um, you know, fade in, you know, clean up all the edges of all the audio files so it's not bluntly coming in with a guitar or and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, but those are the things that make the album, you know, the final polish and make it yeah. cleaner and make it not sound like it was done by, uh, you know, in someone's bedroom or that's the telltale signs when you hear all the rough edges and b- weird breathing and weird edits and things like that. So I take the time to clean everything up and hope most of the time it's covered in the budget of the project. But if it's not, I s- kind of still end up doing most of it because I can't, can't put it well, out. No, my name's on it. Right, you know? I don't feel right. My name's on it. And I, you know, by the time I get to that point of any project, I love it as much as the, I'm as much, I've as much invested in it as the band themselves. You know, I, by the time a band gets to the end of their EP or their album or even, one or two songs if they come in for. I'm so involved and I know so much about it that I can't stand the thought that knowing it can be better and not doing it better. And not do it better. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it seems crazy. I mean, I guess, I'm sure any studio at some point they have to, you know, draw the line, um, especially if they're solidly booked and yeah. it's just not time. Other, other There's not time do. unless someone's paying them for the time. You know, I get that, but I'm still at the point where I can afford to give someone a couple hours of my own time at the end just to get it where I'm a totally proud of it, you know? Yeah. So that's where I am. That's how I feel. I still feel that way. I'm not jaded. I'm not like... That's what I like get about the, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not jaded. I'm like, get these guys out of here, you know. <laughs> All right, next band. Use the same setting as the last band for the master. You know, I... Some people are I, like that, man. I know. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Like, don't be in it if you're just in it for the music because you're, fu- you're just fucking it up. Yeah. <laughs> you can go to a, uh, you know, a much more equipped 
better equipped and more expensive studio than mine that has a you know maybe a nicer facility and a bigger mic closet and choices yeah. of preamps. But if the guy who's controlling it doesn't care to go change the mic or try a different preamp <laughs> or just put your kick drum in the same exact input, same mic and same settings as the last guy, whether they were doing rock, metal, yeah, or pop music, because they're just you know it's just their job, and I don't want to say they're lazy, but it's just their like, job. We won't mention whatever. any names, but one show we went to recently, the sound guy was just like sleeping, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the back. Yeah, yeah well, and, and, and I guess in any job, someone could just kind of, kind of go through the motions, and maybe if you've been doing this and, and you're not excited by it anymore, yeah. like the kick drum sounds fine. You could say, okay, the kick drum sounds fine with the same settings I had on the guy who just left an hour ago, so I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> but maybe if you just... Maybe you don't want it to sound but, like that, though. Right. You know? And maybe if you dug around for 45 seconds extra... It would just be that Or much two minutes extra. If you give him two minutes, it could sound amazing. If it sounds good in 10 seconds, why not spend two minutes to make it sound awesome? That's where I am. And, uh, and so that's... I don't know. I think that's something that I can a offer to people who come here. Is, um, yeah, man. You pull it the fuck off because this I, thing sounds I, yeah. so much better. I say this every time we talk. Where to anyone who is interviewing me, like considering using me or talking to me about the studio, is I care. Mm -hmm. I really do care about my my logo on my web my website is I care about your music, and yep. it's totally and now on your new Twitter too. And now on my new Mike made Bob me a Twitter audio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Follow me on Twitter. I don't know how audio. to use it yet, but Mike <laughs> set it all up and um, Been, uh, trying to hook him I'm up. I'm getting notifications him. all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who it is or why, but I'm getting there. And um, yeah, so I'm on Twitter now too. But that, but that's my thing. I care about your music, and I really do care about your music. Live sound. I'm not just going through the motions and playing on my phone. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I, I see you fucking doing your thing every time we do a live show, and you're like, you got the iPad too. That hooks mm -hmm. up to the machine, and you walk around the place constantly. Constantly, yeah. You know? Yeah, it can always be better. The mix is good after a few songs, but it can always be better. And uh, I won't lie, third set, 1 o'clock in the morning, I might kind of just make sure nothing gets out. Off yeah. the tracks. I'm not well, still. By that I'm not time, still like honing it on EQ. Yeah, if it's if I don't have it by midnight, I'm, I'm never <laughs> I'm never going to get it. But at the same time, I'm still not. You know, playing on Twitter or on Facebook, I'm still mixing and I'm still yeah. watching for who's doing what and when it's appropriate to make some changes and make some moves. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that's what you're there for. That's, that's why what I'm you're there. paid to that's do. You know, same thing I mean, in the studio. That's what I'm here. I'm here to make it. You come in with an idea. And it's my job to capture it and then make it the best that it can be to represent mm -hmm. you to the public yeah. in the best light. And I've put out a bunch of songs that I've done recorded on my garage band, whether it was my iPad, my phone has one that works fine, and even the laptop. But yeah, yeah. I mean, the sound quality is never the greatest, but I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, I recorded. Right. right. I did several tracks, several acoustics, several electric tracks, a bunch of vocal tracks and a bass. This is on Without a Trace, this song, this single we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. And um, I'm just saying on the Garage Band, like, and I used the Garage Band drums originally with my fingers, which right. a lot of people do now. Like, Happy, yeah, totally. Um, what you did for this song is the way that a lot of music is programmed slash produced these days. You just did it on a... Smaller platform. You did it on yeah. an iPad or would you on the iPad or on a, on a laptop? I started on the iPad. Yeah. So you start on the iPad, then moved I did to the, the vocals laptop. on the laptop okay. because it's like the better version of GarageBand. Yeah. So this whole project, just so you all know, is the original concept. Mike did it also on his own in GarageBand on an iPad. Um, as a matter of fact, I I bounced out a thirty second clip, the first chorus of this song. On Mike's iPad version, yeah. he sent it to me as to use. We okay, yeah, you go into the did. studio and you use, and you typically you come up with a click track, or like a you know, yeah, that's a, what work, I did a work mix, and that's what the band tracks to. So Mike sent me his full production basically, and I, I sent you one a whole thing and one with no drums, one with no drums, and then we tracked the drums and to his what the, to uh, his um, version was. without the. We we found the tempo. Um, so Line we gave him a, we gave him a click track, we gave him his original recording on his iPad without the drums, 
because that would have been you know confusing to hear two drums at the same time. And he and he played the drums when we were satisfied with the drums, which didn't take more than two or three passes. I don't think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, I had to go back to a couple sections, but for the most part, well, you had I to played fix the whole fill, song. But you played, yeah. you definitely played the whole song in two passes, and then we might have went back and punched two fills mm-hmm. in or something like that. But um, and then we just kept working from there. So we just replaced one by one, replaced every track. So anyway, I here we're gonna play something for you here. We um. I bounced out. This is Mike's original recording, how he wrote the song and how he, you know, basically um, his 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 work for how the song should be produced, his his uh, his original yeah, idea. Original idea. Yeah, original idea from my brain. Um, so here it is, 30 second clip of the first course. Um, check it out. So that was the that was the first chorus on Mike's version. So, um, yeah, which and it is, sounds good it, when it I heard it. Doesn't sound that bad. No, it doesn't sound bad at all. But what it's I, not full. It's not produced. It's, it's yeah. The drums are like they're the Garage Band. I got to give it to the motherfuckers. They oh, yeah, they produced listen. some good shit because the sounds sound good, but it's still almost too perfect. Yeah, you know what I mean. And just like talking about your four track earlier in this. Uh, in in this conversation was um, it's still it's you're still limited by the the, the source the microphones mm-hmm. you use it you, you sang yeah, right into your iPad um, you you use the guitar cable plugged into an i device um, yeah the uh, i rig the i rig so it's a it's an amp it's an amp model so there's just the limitations right off the bat right off the bat so GarageBand is not even the limitation actually took for the lead of the original one which maybe I'll post the original one like later mm-hmm. at a later time um, I went through my amp head like I did here for, to do the lead but I went through the amp head into the GarageBand so yeah I out yeah. So you still never mic'd an amp a cab <laughs> never mic'd it so <laughs> the only mic shit in this was yeah. the acoustic guitar and that was mic'd with yeah. the fucking um iPad yeah. microphone. <laughs> so when you emailed cool. me that mix, I, I was completely impressed that, it, that you did it yourself, that you did it on an iPad with all virtual instruments, with well, no microphones. Drums were virtual. Everything else was well, virtual, real virtual amps. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Virtual like, amps, um, yeah. Amp modelers and stuff like that. There was no, there was no, uh, you know, bass amp or guitar amp. No microphones used at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, you sang into the iPad, right, or into the um, built-in well with microphone. the singing. I. I Hooked up this microphone, the mic tech. Oh, okay, all right. So there's one the mic tech iPad. microphone involved here. But yes. anyway, so the limitation was the source and the way it was captured more so than GarageBand. And, um, but anyway, I was still completely impressed with it. And I was like, okay, this gives me a model of, you know, this is what we have to be, you yeah. know. So, okay, now we'll play. This is the same exact 30 seconds, um, fully produced. This is Mike's version. Mike mm-hmm. played the drums. We used double guitars through the Mesa Boogie that's here in the studio in the amp room. Yeah. Mic'd it up. He did the lead through his. Um, no, that was the Schecter, but my amp hit my uh, line six. Well, the, the head. rhythm guitar was the Mesa. Oh yeah. And then the lead guitar was Mike's line six head through my Schecter guitar. Um, you know, mic'd up. The bass was DI. Um, I used that Fender over there. Was that a ca- what is that called? Fender what? Uh, P bass okay. anniversary. Yeah, um, I bought that from Steve Kohler from Deja Vu. Great deal, great bass. I love it. A little plug for Deja Vu. <laughs> That's one of the cover bands I do live yeah, sound yeah. for, and um, they're great guys and and lady. Yep, yep. and gal. Yep, um, and um, he gave me a great deal on that bass and. I like bass it. recordings in the studio have been better. Everyone who comes in, not everyone. That's not fair to say. But eight out of ten people choose that bass over their own because yeah. it just has that fullness, that body yeah. that's fat, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a big, heavy piece of wood, and it sounds, <laughs> you know, truthfully, and it, it carries does. a tone, it has sustained 
unbelievable sustain and fullness. And um, I never really ever played a Schecter guitar. That was like my first experience even yeah, playing great one. Too, yeah. I call it my that uh, Schecter's my Les Paul. It's got yeah, the, it's cool. It's got the, I like it's got it. The big body. It's nowhere near the weight of a Les Paul, but it's huh. um, it's got the body shape and the, and the humbuckers, and it just has that big full Les Paul kind of sound. So, mm. that's and cool. this is played with your Pearl. House kit. Yep, house kit. Uh, yeah, every, every instrument on this um, is a studio instrument, right? We use a studio's amps, studio mm -hmm. drums, studio guitar, studio bass. Um, Even that one, like, little... Uh, mm. I was thinking about using the synth for the note th during the uh, verse, you know, as oh, I'm right. holding it out, but that was just a guitar. Just a guitar. Every All yeah. guitars. And yeah, nothing, um, nothing fake. Only amp we brought in was your line six for the lead, which came out sounding great. Yeah. So anyway, so here's a core. Here's the same exact thirty second clip of the chorus fully produced. Here you go. So awesome. you can see the change there. Yeah. It got bigger, it got wider. It got, it's got more meat to it. It's got, you know, it's more everything. But mm -hmm. and I want to, I, we'll play the whole song at the end of this conversation. But the original concept is there, nonetheless. And Mike, you yeah. can hear it. Mike's. If, if you hadn't heard mine, you would have thought Mike sound fine. You know, I don't mean mine. Yeah. I mean the studio version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, if didn't, if you didn't hear if my, you didn't hear my version, version of that song. <laughs> Want to cover it? <laughs> this would be the first time anybody ever covered back me. Right now. Huh, my version. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, just the, well, let's call it the studio, the studio version, you know. And um, it just sounds awesome, you know. The BBA I, mix. Happy with it. Yeah, BBA. That's what I, one of the hashtags I wanted to start using for BBA. Twitter. BBA. B -bar, I had one other. Another BBA recording. Bar, B bar. B bar. Bob Bowling audio recording. B bar. Uh. <laughs> Uh, I don't think any of these things are going to stick. Luckily, my name is kind of bowling, you know. like You kind of remember that. Yeah, you so know that. That's why I would never, I thought of a couple of years ago, of like naming the studio something cool, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like Gray Sky Studios, or was it Red Dwarf? Yeah, well, that's actually a practice hall, but um, practice, practice hall. studio. But yeah, yeah, but you know, Red studios, Tree. A lot of studios have cool names, and I had a bunch of cool ones. I'm not going to say them because I still may do it someday. <laughs> yeah. But um, I thought of that as I to, people know me by my, by my name. So if I change it to the coolest name in the world, you know, Lightning Recording Studio. Yeah. <laughs> Something that's cool. Lightning. But you know what I'm saying, you know. Uh, <laughs> death, death. death. <laughs> a, a cool <laughs> thing, you know. Um, underground Studios or something like that because we're in the basement here. But whatever I did... Um, People wouldn't be able to find me. They wouldn't realize it was me. So it never really made sense to me to do, make that move. Um, Dude, I see Mike playing with knobs. You okay with there? I think. Did we lose? For anything? some reason, we got like a. Well, I have it in my head. It's like a delay on the phone. <laughs> our both oh. of our mics. It just happened all of a sudden. Hmm. I think I might just take the microphone off or just pause it for a second here. Let me do that real quick. Back at it. Okay, back to your song. I keep. Yeah. I'm, 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 I mean, we were talking <laughs> about your uh, the bo the bowling name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The <laughs> what is that called when you like Scottish or like Irish people have that? It's like a family crest. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> bowling. Well, it just it's a, it's kind of a weird name. So it's, it's like a verb, right? So like, you remember it? <laughs> well, it's a sport. It's a sport. Like I had yeah. um, uh, Liz from the band Days of Voodoo. We were just talking about. She said to me the first time I worked for them. She says. Is that really your name or is that like a stage name? Well, I said, well, I'm not a band. I don't need a stage name. I said, if I was going to make up a stage name, it certainly wouldn't be Bob Bob Bowling. I mean, that's like not like really cool. I'd be like, I'd be like, you know, I wouldn't even be Bob. I would change both, you know? Yeah, no. so, like, I don't know. So I was funny that she said that. But yeah. either way, it stands out, you know, and mm -hmm. um, I tried to pick a cool name for the music that I was making because I didn't want to just use my name. What do you, what are you releasing this song without a trace oh, wow, under? Um, 
it's just going to be on the podcast mission, thing, you know. So mission Control just, or well, that, that was, have, that was a, the name, Mission Control. Mission Control Perspective um, would be the name of the EP. Maybe I don't know. Well, I don't know. The reason I changed or added perspective to it was because I wanted to make a different Twitter account for my oh. design slash my ideas. I picture something from so. the past where it said Mission Control colon Perspective. Is that something I've seen, or am I? I think that's that? what I named my page now. Oh, that, okay. like I don't barely ever post anything on but, Facebook. Um, but well, either way, you need well, you need to commit. You need to, you need to get an artist I name. I, I like mission the mission control, control cool. because I love like space and stuff, and I also think that um, I need more control in my life with a lot of different things. And plus, the know, song like, cool. goes right with it. Mission Control without a trace. <laughs> Yeah, right? Like, where did Lost he go? Lost in space <laughs> without a trace. <laughs> Ground control to Major major Mike. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, yeah. anyway, so um, the song came out great, and we're going to do another one now. So um, Yeah, and I'm still working on, well, we are still kind of working on the Transitor song with yeah. Mike Messina and, uh, and Ed Morrow. Ed Morrow. Um, I think the only thing we have to do with that really is... Been a, like redo Mike's vocal. I think right? you and Mike want to work both on the of vocal us song. have yeah. to redo the, the, the band. Song. The song is done like instrumentally. Yeah, yeah. Um, just a matter of you it's guys just a lot deciding. Harder than this one too. Yeah, well, what that one is, uh, transitor is how you say it, right? Mm-hmm. Transitor, the, the, the with an O R, yeah. transitor, and um, something to do. With that space. is Michael Messina and Michael Klein, basically a dual vocal. Yeah. Um, so I made that. You have to basically sing it, see how it fits together. This is what the process we're going through right now is they sing it, then they see how their voices work together and which voice needs to change or whether it be the timing, pitch, delivery, whatever, yeah. to make sure that it all works together because it's like trying to work two guitar parts out. Like a harmony guitar solo has mm-hmm. to, everyone needs to play in time. And bend. we're not sitting here singing together. Right. So you need like to bend <laughs> the, the notes, you know. I don't want to say like synchronized, but it's got to be basically in time. The, yeah. the 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 constants need to hit at the same point. So it's it's a it's a a lot harder than just singing um, s- solo, or even when you do a backing uh, like a vocal double, you're still singing to yourself and you know how you deliver. Mm-hmm. So even that just is it. easier. But when you're trying to pair up with someone else's voice and trying to get each word almost for the whole song. Yeah, it might not flow. be entirely, yeah. but you guys have some trade-off spots. But mm-hmm. mostly, I'd say 80% of the song is dual vocal, and um, they both have equal weight. So it's it's a, it's you know it's a different approach, and it's uh it's you know it's more yeah. work vocally. Um, so anyway, <laughs> that was when I that's gonna be cool. We stopped so doing Atrium Way, the acoustic stuff, right, right. and uh, I did it. I recorded that one the same way too on GarageBand, but it was like three years ago. Right, and I emailed you that one too, and uh, that was it was anti acoustic shit, and I was just like. Play some fucking rock and fucking music, right? So yeah. that's why that one you'll hear eventually is quite a bit harder than without a trace. But without a trace is it's not a, a soft, soft song, but no, it is. Uh, but it's not. Without a trace reminds me, and I, I, I'm not. Hopefully, you take it as a compliment. You should, but um, it reminds me of like kind of like Alice in Chains, um, like a post grunge thing not you know not like you're throwing back to grunge but like a modern day grunge it definitely has a much more modern drum sound of anything else that's changed mm-hmm. uh, over over the years it has the sound of the drums in general commercial drums are just in almost every style of music are, are yeah. just uh much more prominent hotter uh, everything I do, everything are I more, do take you know, that as a compliment because yeah, i love yeah. alice in chains well, i love alice in chains that's I'm not trying I mean, that's to my, recreate alice in chains i was no, actually it doesn't sound like a recreation it just sounds in it's informed by Alice in Chains, you know. It's it's um, yeah. you obviously have the have the the um, influence influence <laughs> hardcore. And, uh, and, you know, that's my error. I mean, I love, I love you know, '90s grunge and uh, you know all rock from that time period, really. And um, you know, I I like the stuff. I I think it sounds great and um, it's cool, and it's really cool that you did everything yourself. That adds a whole other. Thought, like idea to it. Yeah, like, exactly. A whole so other, can, whole other level of credits that you should get for the song, oh. and um, you know, so. And that's another reason too why I wanted to do it. I wanted to <sighs> do it by myself because I wanted people to know that they could just fucking come here, and bring themselves. Yeah. 
and record a song or an idea and it'll sound fucking awesome. I'm working with a girl right now, um, Shawnee Houlihan. And she's not doing what you did um, as far as the style of music or whatever, but she's a singer-songwriter. She plays acoustic guitar. And she came in here looking to put out an album. She wanted production on it. You know, so we brought yeah. in a drummer. Because um, what she she usually just does acoustic, right? Yeah, she acoustic typically voice. plays like open mic type mm-hmm. of scenarios um, or acoustic shows or even a you know rock show where she'll just go up and play and acoustic. Just her. Just her and acoustic guitar. But um, she wanted something like a full band. Well, she wanted the album to be a little more produced. So um, the band Heroes and Error, I brought in Nate, the keyboard player, and Bill, the drummer. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been recently working here over the last few months on their album, and they're great and they're quick. So I brought them in, and uh, I played bass. And I added some string parts and some other little keyboard parts. And she sang all of her own vocals, obviously. She's the singer. She did all of her own backup vocals. She played all the guitars, and she's really good. The songs are really good. And mm-hmm. um, You let me hear a couple of them. But so basically, mm-hmm. she, you know, she did what you did. She came in with a concept, an idea. She knows exactly what she wants. Like, she tells the guys... Yes, no, more like this. You know, sometimes they'll mm-hmm. show her an idea and she'll just approve it because it's awesome. Because they're, yeah. they're good creators, Bill and Nate, and um, they come up with good parts. But she knew exactly what she wanted, and she was able to direct well. And so she did what you did, she just in a like different her way. Producer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, her and I collaborated a lot on a lot of different ideas. I'd throw something out. I'd throw a lot of things out, and... She'd say no to some of them, and that's obviously fine. I mean, it's her idea; it's her thing. I'll just throw ideas out, and some she would love, some she wouldn't yeah. love so much, and that's that's part of the process. If, if, if we're in a band together, any band, the drummer throws up an idea, he gets shot down, or they think he's a genius. It can go either way. <laughs> you have to just throw things out and see what sticks. But yeah. um, anyway, so she did what you did. Um, came in here with songs, good songs, and now we have an album that sounds like a band. Put out and put, put this out. How many out. songs? Um, All together, eleven, twelve. Damn, it's full. It's not. Any, it's not. It's no, a here's full, the song full list. Length. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You got the board and everything. So that's one day. Now the, the <laughs> album has <laughs> twelve like songs that. that follow a certain concept or idea. I won't discuss that now. It's not out yet. Right. But um, then she has a thirteenth bonus song that is literally her. On acoustic guitar in the studio here, um, but we did it in one take. The vocals, like you know how it is, you do the guitar, then you add another guitar, then you go in the booth and sing, or you, mm-hmm. you know, depending on what layers. type of song you're doing, layers. Mm-hmm. She, um, and then for separation and for easier mixing and clarity, she sat right there and played guitar and sang one pass, a uh, tribute to a friend that passed away. And we just mm. we wanted to do it like a live feel, and that's exactly what it is. There's no overdubs, there's no second guitar, and there's no other instrumentation. It's yeah. raw, her and her guitar. Period. It's kind of like what those uh, the Crybaby Records dudes are doing. I don't know if you yeah, seen yeah, them yeah. on Facebook, yeah, yeah, but yeah, they've yeah. been doing the acoustic stuff out yep. outside. And shit. Yeah, cool. I put her. She sat there with one mic on her vocal, one mic on the guitar. The bleeds there. Did you video it for later? I didn't. No, oh. I was I was. You should have done that and then saved that whole it's, thing. I was it. engineering. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. It, this was not recorded in sections or in pieces where yeah, I could yeah. where I could break. I had to like be on it, and yeah. I had to be quiet yeah. and still <laughs> because it was it. You know, the vocal t- we were we were doing the Shit, vocals. Maybe, maybe uh, she got a 14th song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Video, but um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, she's great. Her songs are great. She came in. Um, with an idea, with a concept, good songs, good material, knowing what she wanted, and we executed, and it sounds like these guys are in her band, yeah. you know, and um, you know it's really cool. Danny Hummel did the same thing. I don't, if you know Danny Hummel? Yeah, I met him before. He, here. He's a drummer. And he drums in several bands. He's with you and Tony, shot right? No, didn't he play with no, you? No, not I wasn't in that band, but he was in a band with Tony called uh, Code Four. He still, oh, yeah, still yeah. is, I think. Um, and he was also in BS and the Truth. I think he still is also in that band. Fuzzy Paradise. He's in a, he's in a he bunch of bands. He was here actually doing like songs. Like he came in here to do yeah, his original music. Him. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So he they, that's what I'm saying. He did what you did. He yeah. he's a multi instrumentalist. He's out in the scene. He's a drummer. He plays drums at like everything. Everyone calls Danny for drums. Um, 
on live shows, yeah. open mics. That's what happens when you're just yeah. a solid fucking he's, drummer. He's you know? a solid guy and a solid drummer. So he gets called um, all the time for all kinds of things. So well, uh, you, you have your SoundCloud up still? Um, look at a couple of things you uh, recorded recently. The Cypher, they're uh, supposed their to come out. down sometime soon and uh, yeah. talk. Yeah, we're going to do a podcast with them. But Danny, real quick, he did what you did. He came in with the songs he wrote on guitar. Mm-hmm. He played guitar to a scratch track. He laid down the drums. He added guitar. He added electric guitar. He or I played bass. I played something, and he played some. And um, then he sang them. Then he added keyboards. He brought in a actual Glockenspiel and added that <laughs> to two songs. Like we didn't. Hey, look, when you guys hear Danny's album and you hear Glockenspiel, it is not a virtual instrument. It is not my <laughs> hey, my Cork Triton right here has what? Glockenspiel in it, but he said no. I have a Glockenspiel. And we're using it, and he sat there and played that thing. It was awesome. What is it? Like a percussion thing? Yeah, it looks like a, it's an xylophone, a huge xylophone. Oh, <laughs> but he had the little mallets, and he's like, you know, <laughs> ding ding, you know. But Glockenspiel. it really. Fit. I'll show you that song when we stop this podcast. Instrument? Check out on. Um, Bones My project. SoundCloud, yeah. Bones, uh, SoundCloud.com slash Bones Project. And look for Danny Hummel um, and check out his track. He has one on there called 21 and 85. It's about a friend of cool. his who died at age 21 in 1985 on Halloween night um, after leaving a Halloween party in Cherry Hill. Damn. So it's a spooky, not spooky, eerie, I should say, song about real life things. Um, yeah, man. And it's... Uh, and it's a great song as well. Huge drums, huge guitar solo played by John Carpenter, um, who's played with Danny and a bunch of bands over the years and is still also part of Code 4. So he's a great player. Um, the guitar solo is incredible. And um, I played bass on that one. <laughs> holla. So, holla. <laughs> I, I actually love bass. I'm not, a, you know. I'm not a bass player. I can't, you know. I can't. I can't slap. I couldn't. I couldn't play uh, like any well, flea I mean, songs. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm or uh, you know anything super complicated. But I do love bass guitar, and I love the way that bass feels if it's placed properly in a song. As far yeah. as like, bass can be a melodic instrument on top of holding down the bottom, and I love that. And um, yeah. I played a lot of bass on Shawnee's album, almost all of it, and I love it. I love the what it added. And it's subliminal. It's not like and no kind of showboating, no mm-hmm. no tricks, um, just no popping, you no you know nothing, you know, you no no Billy Sheehan stuff. It's just yeah. holding down the bass. But there's little things that change the mel change the melody, add to the melody, even add harmony once in a while with the bass, and it's awesome. I, I love I love bass. Um, I'm not saying I'm awesome. I'm saying bass is <laughs> yeah, awesome. Bass guitar. So bass guitar is awesome. Especially when you have and, awesome uh, bass to play. Everybody, if you know a bass player, give them a big hug because they <laughs> they get ignored. You know, people, oh, the guitar solo is killer. Dude, or your voice is so beautiful. Man. Not by musicians, but, but I mean, the yeah, audience, regular, they don't like, hear the bass. Fans. If you listen to a song, you know, the general public, when they listen to a song, they aren't hearing the bass. It's there, and if you muted it, they would seriously miss Especially it. Especially if it was back in the eighties, and you were Metallica and Cliff Burton. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah what happened? All styles, but it's, yeah, really in metal bass. Unless you saw um, him doing that shit really live, tucked in. You didn't even know he did it. <laughs> when the bass is lined up perfectly with the drums and the guitar, and it's the same note as the guitar, but the same tempo as the drums, it, it really gets missed there. by the general public, but. Believe me, if you hit mute on the bass track on almost any song, <laughs> you, you will be sad. The song just <laughs> falls apart. Um, so hug your local bass player. Bass is awesome. Bass players are awesome. Or your touring bass players. <laughs> Whoever. If you find a bass player, tell them you love their bass because it really <laughs> does make the bass. music. And, um, you know, until I got involved, I've been in band since I was 16 years old. And I never appreciated the bass player at that point. I mean, I did. I loved my bass players. <laughs> You know, every band I was ever in, but I never really, um, until I got involved in recording, never saw like, how it, yeah. detrimental it is to a song and to a recording. Um, you yeah. know, they I was in a band when I was a teenager with no bass, but two guitars, drums, and vocals. You know, 16 yeah. years old, we didn't even know anybody who played bass. And um, <laughs> it's terrible. It's a terrible thing to not have a bass player, you know. Oh, yeah. so, Luckily, when anyway. I was in high school, I knew a guy named Pete. Yeah, if he wears, he's fucking held it down. 
<laughs> throughout wearing. the years. I know that guy. And then and then I had to take it over when I was in the metal band with him because we awesome. couldn't they couldn't find a bass player and I wanted to be the second guitar player, but that never really happened because we never found a bass player. Yeah. And now bass at Bob Bowling Audio is even more awesome because of the P bass. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's so the awesome. The P, the P bass. <laughs> so. I think you actually had one of those kind of basses back in the day. Yeah, probably. It's standard. I mean, it's it's what you need, you know? So When we were playing in the basement, that's sulfur. Let's listen to Mike's song, the full track without a trace. It's awesome. Check it out. Check it. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Duke.